All right, so. Um, How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a good week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Andy, I'm excited. It's amazing. So uh, today we're going to talk about what we got for you, people. All right, so we've, we've kind of gone over. Is everyone, Andy, actually, this is a good quiz. Does everyone give me the nine lineages? So the first, there's the first one, there's the two tiger schools. Tiger schools. All right. Knocking down the tiger school, which is Koto Yu. The jewel tiger school, which is Yoko. All right. So the first two. The next two are the two hidden schools. The hidden door school. Yeah, you're skipping ahead, Kyle. There's a hidden door school, which is Tagakaryu. And there's a hidden in the cloud school, Komogakaryu. All right. Then you have two Shinden schools. Kyle, which one of them? Close. Shinden Fudoyu. Shinden Fudoyu. And then there's Kuki Shindenyu. All right, which has the coolest name of all the schools, which is the Nine Demon School. All right, so, so those are the first, the first six. So they're easy to remember. Two, the two tiger schools, the two hidden schools, and the two shinden schools. After that, there's three more, which are Hikami, Hikage Yoshinyu, and Gyoko Shinyu. All right, so we're going over these. We've we spent a lot of time on Kotuyu and Gyoko Yu, and actually talked about the differences in the schools, um, why they were taught together, how complementary they are, but just the individual differences we pick out from those schools. Today we're going to talk about Kagaku, all right, the hidden door school. Um, the first Nimpo school, all right, where like you've got Koshi Jitsu and Koto Jitsu, this is actually called Nimpo. Um, I've seen different places where, and in, probably in the way I teach, which honestly may be wrong, is that it, it bore out of uh, Koto Yu and Yoko Yu. All right, and from there, that was the basis. I've also seen other things, which is actually said that no, the Gaku you actually started on its own by itself in the 1100s. Now, I've, I've seen both. I, I haven't done the research to say which one's which. I'm not sure. I was taught that it was kind of pulled out of, um, and I've thought that way, but I have seen other things that kind of suggested that with pretty credible references that it could have been back in the 1100s. The here are done any type of look into ninjutsu, you hear about the shadows of Iga and the Iga mountain and stuff like that, and this is where the Kagakuri is in And so this is where that started. So when they talk about the, the ninjas of Iga mountains and stuff like that outside of in Kyoto and Japan, you know, where they basically, if you watch any of the, the history of Japan Netflix and stuff like that, you'll see that they have to talk about them specifically and how they're just bastards. <laughs> you know, they fought in the mountains and just, just or they'd send armies up there and they just slam down the armies. You know, so it was, you know, because they just fought and dirty, you know, and they won. Um, but that's where this, these guys come from, these come from. Now, that being said, there's actually some specific, um, um, uh, weapons that actually go with this school. All right, so like the, the, um, breathing tubes, which the ninjas like underground the breathing tubes, which is the ninjas, the Kaxo Shoge, which is like the lasso with like, Four-sided black shuriken, this Hanmen shuriken, coming from this lineage. And if you can show the claws, not the effects for the uh, uh, shudra, the claws, the climbing claws, coming from here. Um, mantra, this one actually has like a mantra, basically, it's void vines all across the street. So this is where Hanshi kind of think of basically revamped it into a void vines, a void vines, a void vines, if there's violence, fucking win. All right, that's it, now you gotta keep that, you know, don't, don't get fight, don't get fight, if you have to fight, Make sure you fucking win. Um, and the Godon test. The, the, have you ever heard of the fifth degree Godon test? Which is basically you're sitting there and you have a guy behind you with a sword ready to cut your head off and he makes no noise and then cuts down on you and you have to get out of the way. So that test actually originated from this movie. Now, that being said, I typically don't actually teach a lot of things out of the Dr. Ryu, um, just because. Um, a lot of that stuff, again, is based on, you know, Koto Yu and Yoko Yu, but they do have their own kata, which are usually just flat out more advanced. In the beginning kata, actually, there's a lot of stuff with um, unarmed against sword, 
which is stuff you usually don't get to see in the Zillow flat book. So because of that, I usually don't, in the QO class, don't teach the guy for the material. But that being said, and we're looking at this, I'm actually going to teach some the guy for the content today that is not sword verse. Uh, what also is kind of cool because the say come on for the day is Shizen. Fighting out of Shizen. Which um, for you there know what she does is basically just as you're standing right now. Natural boast. Just here. Your foundation, your alignment, your shoulders, your hips and feet are over each other. It's a foundation for all your other come on. And you can fight out of this posture. And it actually is like probably the most one of the most important postures because this is where all fights start. You know, so if you're starting here, that's you know very good, be a good spot to start the actual fight. Um, and so some of these Luca are actually fighting from she's at. So uh, this first one we're going to look at, and I've actually, like I said, never, never taught this. Uh, this one I actually may have taught one, one time before. The other two I've never taught. Um, so I may have a teaching answer, which may be all you guys. So we're going to get back. So the attack of this is actually a big, kind of sweeping, knock your head off shot. All right. And again, remember these guys are a lot of swords. So you can imagine like a sword kind of coming down. This one was adapted to make it more of an arm. So that shot's kind of coming in, boom, knocking my ball. All right. We're going to go down to the Tsutoku of Yoshi. Yeah. Get him right here. All right. From here, after he doubles over in agony, all right, we're going to come back up. Catch him. Pretty simple for the most part. That comes in, I'm gonna go down this back. I can just throw anything in here. This could be a knife, if you're, but now I'm just doing be a nice and just giving to just to kind of close line shot here. As I come up, note that the arm that just hit him is going to be the arm that captures this. Alright. Then from here we're gonna step forward and leverage, take him down, break from there. Y'all see that? Got it? I think you got that. Alright, let's go. So, what I'm going to do, I'm not seeing you guys do this, okay? Maybe a couple times, but let's see I'm not doing, what I'm trying to say? This. I'm not trying to duck under that. I know where the punch is coming, it's coming here. I'm stepping out and going to this knee. All right? That will get my head out of the way. All right, I'm using that. I know he's trying to punch me up there. Okay. Now, as I do that, I'm kind of actually, I'm not just going straight down because I, I literally kind of can't, right? I need to give myself some space for my hips to sit down there. So my hips are going forward and this leg is just dropping out. So he comes in at the point in time that I can just pull this up. I'm not, now I'm already happy behind him too because I always know where he's coming, right? And I also have a little forward momentum. So just to kind of pull your arms. I got a little forward momentum into that shot. If I were to go straight down, I'd have to throw my hand out. That doesn't really hurt him. But as he's rotating forward, I'm coming up. It's actually, boom, I'm actually going into him, hence I get the double diamond action. Right? We're colliding. Alright? Now, all my weight is going to be kind of on this foot for the most part. As I come up, I'm actually going to turn back into him to capture this. Now my weight's all on this foot. Alright? I want to have this. I don't want to dick around with this. And also, too, this is, again, kind of getting crooked. So as I come out, I'm pulling, whoa, I come in. Stepping forward, breaking from there. Okay? Really having my body do this, the rotation of my arms do this. Let me just step up here. I'm not trying to pull him with my shoulder. I won't be able to. This is here, this is here. I'm turning my body in a position that makes it very hard. For, I mean, he's not going to be able to bicep curl in my whole body. It'd be very hard. Or he's not going to intend to, but I got this one going on too. Oh. <laughs> and then from here, the reason I'm going down this outside leg is because that's the whole first break. <laughs> when I went down on this leg, I was, wouldn't work. So as that's coming in, we're stepping forward, dropping it. Okay. Pushing up with this, like rotating. 
Also, this is very tight this way too. So his arm is rolled back this way, I still have it this way. Okay? Alright, so let's get that, let's get that body movement down a little bit. I want to see your body doing more of it unless your upper arms. Call it a pro tip, I guess. That's what the kids call it. Depends on that punch. <laughs> that was a coco okay? <laughs> by the way. I need the mat's abdomen. As I'm coming back out into this, I want you to look. Matt and I are kind of both facing the same way. Um, obviously, I got a decent lock on this, but it's not the greatest. What I'm not doing, you can if you have a jump on I'm not going straight ahead and then down. Matt will just walk with me. We're both facing the same way. I'm actually going to step into him a little bit. <laughs> which now changes the whole angle of that arm and takes out a lot of the fight in it and actually gives me the ability to even grab into here. And then I'm going to go back out and down. I'm not going straight ahead with two steps. So well, when I'm here, I'm not just going one, two, and that. He just walks with me. Right? I need to catch that arm a little bit more. I'm going to step into it. Oh. Oh, that's a big difference now, isn't it? But now he doesn't have room to fall. My knee's in the way. So I go back out this way. And give him that room to fall. Okay? So adjust that ending angle. I think the flag and people will get a lot easier. Okay? It actually helps extend the arm too because you're pushing me to that shoulder. And then that come back, back out, actually, he stretches the arm back out. Okay? The arm has to go over a certain amount before going into this. Um, I will throw us a punch. I'm here. And I start trying to do this now, it will be difficult for me. The arm just hasn't kind of rotated enough because I'm not fully rotated back. I'm going to rotate back fully to him first. And see what that did? Now his arm is over full up. So now this coming in is easy and going out is easy. I see a lot of people that are getting to about here. And because they know there's a step in, they try to step in from this position. Very hard. He's too erect. And now you're trying to push over that shoulder. Turn. Face the way he is. Capture him. Extend that arm more. Then step in. Then you'll be on. Okay? You guys are leaving about 25 degrees on that table to try to get that step in, and it's making it a problem because that shoulder isn't quite over enough, far enough for me to be able to go in. Make sense? Yep. All right, good. So we're going to be looking at not the Takakuyu, but these, these ones from Takakuyu that actually utilize Shizen, and we're going to utilize Shizen more. All right? Because it is a fighting posture. You see, every fight starts here. But you can fight from here. This is the foundation of a lot of your uh, come up. You know, shoulders, hips, feet. Right? You try not to violate that. Now, do we have certain exceptions in like a Dumar? Yes, we do. But for the most part, they're pretty alive. Right? Think of think of um, one of those little things. It's not stretch arms strong, but like like those toys you could just kind of manipulate. Right? But imagine it's a toy that's manipulated, but this part is like one solid piece. Okay, you spread his legs and turn his arms. This shit's still the same, right? This part's still the same. The plane I'm on is still the same, right? I'm just moving the arms, but this part's still the same. So in that vein, let's look at this really from a Shizen standpoint. I really want to concentrate on kind of keeping this up and down. This is certain. So as Matt comes, I'm just going to, right? I'm going to come back up. I'm going to step in a little bit more. So instead of leaning into this, I'm going to keep this, this part of the structure, I'm just going to step in more. And I'm going to step out. No, all the time. Here, straight up and back. All right. I really want you to go through these the next couple times, really keeping that, keeping this here. So if you're bending over, if you're doing that, that's not she's in, right? Well, that means I got to get down where I need to lower my hips more so I keep this one. Here. All right. Means I need to not go up like this. 
Really keeping this up and down. All right. We really want to emphasize that she's ending this stuff for you stuff right now. All right. Go. And just like I don't quite have arm keep going. Cool. If you want to say okay, what are some other kind of neat options out of this? Just because I've never taught this before. I may never teach this again. And it's Christmas time or holiday time. I don't know. There's a, one of the neat endings on this is that I like is actually kind of more. God, I don't know. Coming up. Here. Here. This is important. You want to come around this? And here. And leading the outside, in top of his elbow. All right, I could go on and do the rest of the technique from here. I think you see that, right? But I'm not going to. I'm going to pick this elbow up. Forward. And then back on the side. All right. Which is uh, not the coolest thing for Matt because he's already bent over. Normally, if I were to come back up and do this, he would stand back up and then I would take him back down. Mm -mm. I'm keeping him down. So I'm not giving him the luxury of putting his shoulders back up to regain. So since he can't do that, his only option then is to throw his hip forward. And I take it over from there. Alright. So if you want to try that version, have fun. It's actually a neat little touch. Alright, you can actually go, maybe, maybe if they're even. You don't have the, um, it's like, I don't quite have it. His arm's not quite rotated as much as I want. It's actually rolling back this way. He may even be trying to roll back right here. Fine. We'll do that now. Okay. All right, that's fun. Holiday, presents, galore. All right. Galore. Wonderful for the holidays. Jack, where are you? So she's coming in. We're going to look back at the first one, yeah. Here, I've gotten in. I'm very tight on this part right here. This is I'm not just this isn't just an arm thing. I am pulling this and actually turning my left rib into her arm a little bit. So I can really hyperextend, almost like I'm trying to break it this way, like boom. Like this. Oh, oh. I mean at the point in time maybe pulling her back a little bit on the shoulder to really get that. Alright? Because man, I want that. I want this thing hyperextended. That every part that I don't, that I come back in here, she can bite her throw and fight her way out of that. Or she can use that as a pivot point to come over and throw me. I don't want that. Actually, we'd be going under this one. Uh, I think if we do it from under, we'd be hanging from in between my legs and throwing me out. Oh. Yeah, that's what it would be. Okay. <laughs> so, but I'm actually all like going to do. So imagine going down into a. But instead of having your back hand come to the front, your hands would actually come up and out. Try to grab my ball from behind and throw me out. Basically, yes. Yeah. Yes. We the other axis, as soon as you go under, you grab the testicles and you throw them back. That's what I was being really nice about. I'm like, because I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, that works that way. Or it just comes down like a little uppercut right into the front of the junk. That would probably be the escape from here. This is a pivot point. Right? She needs to, she'll work around that pivot point, releasing that leg and coming under. I don't want her to do that. So I'm gonna pull, pull this up away, get that rib in there. Now, that is a little different story. That option is not there anymore. Her now her option is actually a leg going into the back of my leg, which is a lot more difficult because I have a plan on the damn thing. All right? So, come, just one or two times, as you're coming in, just get this, and then actually just put your rib Right in front of a little, extend that, extend that a little bit more. So this in between. This one. All right, then we'll move on to it. Just need to see that option. Mate, questions, thoughts, concerns. <laughs> you can go on with this version of this all day long. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fun things. Uh, I should have gone over here where basically, instead of going straight back and over, you actually adjusted your foot and you actually went back around them a little bit to give them even a little more of a flip. If the distance is right, you can actually get a leg in there too. You know, and really kind of, flop them back around to the head really well. You come back, you can actually then bring, instead of going back, actually bring this arm back on them a little bit. So like, yeah, like think of like, you know, we've got the onikadakis that go this way. We also have onikadakis that come this way, right? The same premise lies here, right? I don't have to have him go this way. I could actually have him go this way on that trajectory. 
But that's not this class. <laughs> this class is about the God for you and um, that. So next one is going to be really easy um, in terms of a um, So just like this one, this is a long reaching uh, grab. Just like the other one, remember these were kind of adapted from sword technique, so like this kind of this big cut. Oh god, he's under hit. This is a long grab, Ooh, right. So he's kind of leaning forward, all right? This could have been, you know, the grab is maybe a, like a spear or something like a foot, right? He's really kind of coming into that. So he's going with that long grab. All right, she's done. She's in. She's in. That's it. Go. Little <laughs> <laughs> joke, but it was kind of fun for me. Yeah, yeah. So remember, this is she's in. All right. So he's. So there's a couple things. As he's coming with that long grab, I'm doing. I'm not doing this. I'm not. Here. Alright, I'm not here. As he comes with a long grab, I'm. He, he's still extended. I made him over grab. And also, too, I'm twisting his wrist. Alright? Now, from here, what I'm not doing is I'm not going like this. Just stand right back up. I want to keep this. So I do. And I, he's following it the whole time. Whole time. All right. This isn't a. I'll never pull it off. It'll rip me to the ground. Yeah, you know, I better get onto his arm and do something at that point. There. This is a. I'm using his energy. <laughs> All right. Constant and never letting him do this. It's constant like this, and constant will stay like that the whole time. Okay. Again, it looks very simple, but there's a lot to it. All right, and I think you can see, but now, well, actually, look at this first, and I'll show you how this applies into other strategies. All right, go ahead. It's Zenith of Torque the whole time, Adam. That is correct. I haven't played with him, but you may have seen him in like, a movie at some point in time, like, this is a story. But, like, the, the kids have the trains, the wooden trains, that has, like, the uh, string on the front, and they just pull it along, and, like, the, there's the engine and then the passenger car. Now just follow. They're following the path set by the one in front of them. Right? You understand the analogy? This is what I'm doing. All right? So Matthew comes in. Actually, Kim wants to go. So as Kim comes in, I start pulling on the string. All right? So now the whole thing's taut. But if I were to have that and then just jack it off the side, I lose you. You, you. Your weight goes back, right? I need you out like this the whole time. And I'm going to keep you like that the whole time. Right? Your hands leading, your shoulder, elbows trying to catch up, your shoulders trying to catch up, your hips trying to catch up. The whole time. So there's a circularity in this. How's your arm? You good? Okay. Okay. Again. All right. There's a twist which helps lock it all in. But what I'm not doing, this is, this is constantly going... We go this way. And that's key. Well, it's like, well, if your hand's going to there, why not just do this? It doesn't work. I let her up. I need to pull her along this track the whole time. Okay? Does that make sense? So you're there here, you got them off balance, keep them going off balance, and then do the turn to come back. Once their weight has gone over that foot. This is key. We talk about this in movement when we talk about us moving, right? Falling into position. Stick with me here. Remember when we had the, the gyroscope thing? Gyroscope goes out over the hip. But what happened? The foot goes under. Right? You remember this? Okay. Look, you are there. So, body movement. So, body movement. You're, you're transitioning. You're moving from your hip. Right? Your hips move. And your hips actually start going out over your feet. And then all of a sudden, you put your feet under it to catch you from falling. Or it goes over here, it catches you from falling. It's not my foot goes out and my hip goes over it. Okay? It's my hips are going this way, oh shit, and I put my feet under it to catch me. 
Follow me so far? Same thing's happening on Mac. Mac comes over. Whoa. All right. If I pull his hips straight this way, once I pull his hips over his feet, he'll just put his feet under and kick himself. Right? But the second his hips go out, over, I come back around. Now he's going to his foot. Because he's going to like, oh, my foot should be here. No, okay. It's not going anywhere. That's when you do the turn. But in every way, it goes from here to here. And then one foot that. Here, here. Oh, you can see the inside. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Go ahead. Very. We talk about this kind of this this is a, we talk about this premise a lot, you know, in higher level class, especially in all overs and one offs and stuff like this. This concept of you know just moving and jizen and and seeing it in kata form is very important. Um, but again, don't be caught with that little hypergram saying this. It's really the feeling and spirit in this is that's really the big deal. So I mean, I can take this whole thing. He's grabbing onto me, right? Well, he's not extended yet, but he will be in a second. Right? Does this look like a familiar spot? I'm just in a different spot. Matt's in the same position. Okay. Right? Only thing I did different on Matt is because I didn't have his hand turned. I'll reach him and make sure the shoulder didn't come up. I just had this hand here, so I made sure his shoulder didn't go up that way. Right? And then kept doing the same thing. Now, think about this, for you guys who know Soto Gate, what if I had that aspect going into a Soto Gate? Oh my god, that would be so easier. Imagine if a Soto Gate started from here. It would be the easiest Soto Gate in the world, as long as you learn to back up. Right? Well, you can. But let's, for you, you've got people who know what I'm talking about, I think you appreciate what I'm saying. But now we're starting from here. Get him to feel what he was just feeling right here. She's done. done. Okay? Me, just move your body to the same place. Don't worry about that they're holding on to you. Only, only thing, just keep this hand right here. So that shoulder doesn't turn. Just do that. Step off to the side. And then just do the rest of it. You know this position, you've just been doing it for half an hour. Alright? Now go for a grab. Make them go there. Instead of them extending and getting in there and having to be there, you just make them go there. Make them have that feeling. All right? And then you just do the rest of it. Okay? You guys, this, once you get this, this will be easy. So a lot, a lot of common mental myths are exposed in Shiza. All right? And this, this myth is everywhere. Um, well, I know I have to get his ass to the ground, so I will just get him lower to the ground earlier, and that means he'll fall down better. Oh, shit. I'm not gonna. He's lower to the ground, yes, but he is not easier to take down from here. Right? I mean, we all know this, we've all seen this, right? How many times have we all done Thai toes? We're like, <laughs> I can't do Thai toes because you're trying to get him down to the ground too early. Okay, sorry. I, that. I need to topple him. He's tipping right now. When I go down, and right now he's extending because he's determined to try to keep hold on to me. Me standing up is a problem for him. All right? Because he can't contract. If you contract, he needs to let go. He's going to let go because he's stupid. Okay? But if I go like this, he can now hold on and contract and make a All right? I don't want to do that. I want to keep him tipping. The entire piece of time. All right. Yeah, you, you did just this right there. Because I gave him room to compress. Do we see that? Just like on this one, if I do this, I gave him room to compress. I need to never give him that room. Okay, we understand? Same thing here. Don't go low, be high. All right, that's what I say. Do she's at. There's another one. Hopefully, oh, even better. All right, we're working. She said, one, two. He's chasing me up here. Think of it this way: if you're holding something outreach, all right, 
is it easier to hold it like this, or is it easier to hold it like this? It's easier to hold it. You think so? Uh, let's, give you, let's give him a heavy weight. <laughs> let's give you a full, like a 25, 45 pound plate. And I would bet you that if you have to hold it at arm's length, that over time, you're gonna turn your hands and you're gonna get lower and get your rest of your body into that to try to compress. You're not gonna go like this and throw, you may go like this, put an OB to stack your body, but you're not gonna go here. Because now you get all your shoulders just gonna burn. Burn, burn, burn. And that's what I'm doing to him. I'm making you hold something like that. Now this is hard. And now he would have to physically move himself into something else, which I'm always ahead of him. Okay? So please don't go down. Don't, don't try to get any closer to the ground. It actually won't help you one bit. Stay, stay in, she said. The come on works. Don't try to make better this. Fucking things burn up in 900 years. You don't know that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you just don't. I said 15 minutes. No, trust me, you don't know it. Go with the come on. Prove, let's see this. I'll prove to yourself that it works. All right, go ahead. How are we feeling? So far, we got to understand the concept, right? Yes. So, uh, um, now we've been looking a lot on just on this plane, right? On this plane. Give me a feeling. Well, the thing is, is this isn't the only plane I can fight him on. I can make him feel, I can give him a rough feeling of this. This is him falling over his side, right? You understand that? Which is also, coincidentally, same feeling you have to try to coach, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is the start of Kai Coach. And what happens in the end, you come back around. Do we acknowledge that? Without me in, in there. Ooh. All right, there's one. Please. He's in Kai Coach. Right? And what happens? I come back around. I come back around. You can do this, you can be Thai Tosh. All right, so I'll ask you a question. Do you want to see this in Thai Tosh? Or do you want to look at it in the menu? Let me see this. Okay, <coughs> so give them the same feeling, right? Give them the same feeling. This pull out, but as you pull them out, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna keep this pulling out this way, and you're gonna bring yourself around this way. So now what I'm doing is I'm, pull, I'm still pulling him with this side of my body. Right? He's being pulled with this side of the body. You understand that? This side's holding him. As I, after I do that, ooh, give him that feeling like he's leaning, I'm going to still keep pulling this around, and I'm going to get to here. He's still being pulled by this side. You see this? His arm's still extended. And from here, I'm just going to rotate around him. So I'm cutting it off in more blocks. But he still has himself the same feeling the whole way through, don't you? Yeah. Right? He still has this. This feeling. Side question, should I? We see it. Seriously, it's a little more difficult than one thinks, but if all you're going to is keep, keep giving them the ceiling, let them keep the ceiling. Put yourself in a position where they still have this feeling. Don't let them do this. Don't let them do that. I'm going to be here. I don't want to do that. Starting it all over again. Get into here. Keep them feeling that way. Right? I'm still pulling him around with this side. Okay? Give him that feeling and just put yourself in a position where they still maintain that feeling, but you're in a position to throw. And then do the throw. Okay? Go. If it doesn't help people, I'm very sorry. Uh, in when we first did this, there was a circle that we kind of dragged them around and through, right? That we pulled them out around, kind of this moving back, right? You see that? And this one, same thing too. I brought her here, and I kept her coming out and around in this circle until I came back, right? Feeling, and she's feeling like she pulled around the circle. In this one, I'm actually physically making a circle. With my body. That's why she has the same feeling. 
I made the circle. It's my chest. And then. <laughs> and then we change the thing, and that's how. <laughs> right. Okay. But can we see that? I'm actually now. Woo. Out. If I come back, she moves back in. I want to keep her still feeling like, like she's going out, but I'm coming back in, so I make her come around the circle and make it angry. Okay. <laughs> All right, we see that. All right, that helps you great. If it doesn't, don't use it. <laughs> I want to show you how this really translates into a lot of things. So this, this, this position, right? This feeling. This, that touch her, this, right? Okay, we can use it for this. We can use it for something. We can use it for this. All right, great. He grabs. Punch. We know, we know the position, right? All the rest off are there too. That just happened to be a home. Let's actually make it a uh, little bit easier. Grab. So we shift off the side like we have been. Whew. Come here. here. Or up, right? Or, yeah, I'm just going to turn around and face out. Oh, this is great. And there's our, there's our, our, our mark take down. Okay. Um, it's actually not. We've been looking at everything on this plane, right? All coming out, falling off to the side. We, we understand this feeling that they're in, right? So we know we can make them replicate this feeling. What if he was feeling that way? Try to set me backwards. Right? Still being pulled out. Do we see that? But now it's not this way, it's this way, right? So it's just this way. Now I'm making it feel that way. Do, we, do you see that? Do you understand that? Okay, so I want you to take, and to prove it to me, he said what you guys were doing, which was wonderful, which was this, here, go down this way and make them like that. So they're not going to the side, they're going backwards. All right, so, so basically I'm shifting about 45 degrees back that way instead of that way. Okay? Show me that you can make them feel that way. Let's try it, but everyone's sucking the feet up. And because I've, I've switched the plane, I'm starting adding in a second dimension. When you uh, shift it off to the side, no, my feet are aligned to the middle of him, to his center. Right? Now I'm not aligned like this, but I'm in alignment to his center. Do we see that? Okay. Well, what we're seeing is now we're going off the side, people are they're not aligned to his center. Get aligned to his center. Same thing. So I'm still aligned right to his middle. <coughs> Okay, you see that? Don't think of anything different. Literally, I'm just taking this, this here, and like a clock, putting it up here, right? Not a digital clock, a clock, clock, like that. He is my center. He is the center of my universe, right? Okay? Is he trying to mass? So he's very important to me. I need to pay a lot of attention to this relationship. All right? Nine o'clock. Eleven o'clock. Are you still the center? <laughs> Alright, so well, please understand that that's happening also. Not just him, it's, it's you. Do we see the clock analogy? Mm -hmm. Okay, go to 11. Alright, go. What I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Rough success. So now let's look at the size of this clock. The small little desk clock. Is it that clock or is it a big clock? Right? Little desk clock. Medium size clock? Okay. Hey, Donnie, Jordan's furniture clock. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> I'm still moving to 11 o'clock. My outer hand's just gotten longer. Let me see that. All right. So, experiment with that just a couple times. I think you guys are doing really well. You're here. And then, once you experiment with the size of the clock, actually, just experiment with the size of the clock. I'm going to be here after 11. And it's still pointing right at her. My heels are pointing right at her. Yeah. Yeah, she's at an big. All right. A couple times, just experiment with the circumference of the clock. I don't think on purpose, but she did. If one of the other great things about this is if I'm here and I'm trying to attack with what's touching her, maybe my hands, 
The second I start going, she, she instantly recognizes it. And we'll try to fight against it, right? To feel it. There's a sense of touch. I'm trying to fight with what's attached to her. I'm trying to, yeah, she gets it. She doesn't affect me her sense of touch and feel. But if I do it with my body, now I'm disrupting her sense of balance. And your sense of balance doesn't kick, it doesn't kick in until it's, you're starting to lose it. All right? It doesn't, your sense of balance isn't going to kick on now. You still feel balanced. It's not even going to really kick on now. Maybe right there, I started it. But I've already got to going. Right? Or if I were to grab you, the instant I start grabbing you, instantly going to start. Yeah. Instantly. So if I'm fighting her with what's not attached to her, I have a jump on her. Okay? So that is another great thing about this, is the fact that we're here relaxing, wrestling, 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 wrestling. She doesn't pick up on it until she's up. Okay? And that's part of this, too, is it's getting these hands out of play. Now, don't get me wrong, I can these hands. It's like, ah, ah, you all fun christmas things for that. All right? I'm not going to because it's that time anyway. All right? But the fact that it's, oh, that's a problem. You can't pick up until it's too late. All right, that's another reason why this moving, moving like this is really good. Because it shows, hey, you know, I'm not attacking, I'm going around your hand. You can by the hand, do this. Right? You get that original position. That original position, that original very, very well. And I can get, and I do this, and I, yeah, exactly. In an instant, the second I grab onto the music, yep, yeah, all of that. So that's the brain, double down, he's attacking your hand. What what part when was the first signal to your brain? I'm tipping falling. over. Yeah, I'm tipping over. I'm falling. No defense, just fall. Right? Different different system picks up too late. You get it? Make sense? Okay. Questions, thoughts about this. Do you want to continue with this or do you want to look at the last one? And pick up for you though, never keep it over. Last one. So um so this one. We're not going we'll Actually, you guys are pretty talented. Um, Hapa. Oh, Hapa. Um, oh, by the way, the other thing about Tagaku, um, it actually has a, um, a kamai that isn't in some of the other ones. A hashimanji. There's an ishimanji with the hands back like this. Is that like the machine of the It looks like she has a fist. Open hands. Oh, yes, very close. Okay, it's not So, um, we're going to look at this in a modified way just because A, it's been two hours and I don't want to break your leg. All right? Because this could, could be that. Um, super slow stop. Okay. <laughs> it's it's that knee takedown that we typically look at from here. Oh okay, yeah, uh, so it's just actually the right one. Let me take a look at from here. That one. It's that knee takedown, but done to the inside kicking leg. Okay. So we can see this is a this is fraught for peril already. Okay. So that is the cut that is the cut. So he would come in, I would step outside, swooping right into there. Other options, anchor would be, I just break it, I think I go. I have dislocated my knee doing that. Yeah, I did, but that, that thing if I never identified what the actual cut was. So, we're not going to do it, <laughs> right? It's been two hours, all of are coming, last thing I need is some in this position and an MCL pair, okay? But we're going to look at it from the aspect of Shazam. He's coming in, he's punching. Uh, actually, oh, punch. uh, yeah, actually, just yeah, long run, uh, long yard. Right? Kind of looks familiar. It's that ability to move your body into a position so that this leg is right there. Without looking at it, without paying attention to it, without doing anything, to understand that you just get right in it. Very similar to the quicker you want to do the fast thing from approaching from the same aspect. So we're going to start with the position that we have been doing, which is kind of this here. 
but I'm gonna rotate a little bit more inside. I'm gonna give him that same feeling. I'm just gonna go right here. I'm gonna walk right through to that knee. All right, notice I'm not doing anything hard. I'm not trying to focus on the, I'm putting myself in a position so he's getting pulled out. I'm just stepping into there, push she's in. And from here, I'm just walking through him. That's it. Okay, you see it? Go. The way I'm doing this is very different than you've probably ever seen before. All right. You've probably seen here and lean the knee forward and take him down. Right? You've seen grab forward and take them down. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm getting here, placing leg. All right? Yes, I have tension in here, but what's doing the technique is this leg. All right, look at the angle of my foot and my ankle. Sorry, my knee and my ankle, right? They're on top of each other, do we see that? Mm -hmm. To make this work, I need my knee to go out in front of my ankle to take hyperextend him, right? Mm -hmm. And that's typically what we do, we stay here and we do that. I can also accomplish that by pulling this hip forward. And look at that, look at the change. It went further ahead. Than I did before. So I'm not doing, ah, mm, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this as she's done. The step, the outside leg, I did it. Not the inside, not the inside one pushing down on me. Now, that's the way I want you to do it. Because I want you to pretend this is a she's end class. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't do both. That's how we're holding that. I'm showing the fact that this technique can be done with this outer leg and this outer leg only when she's in. So your goal on this is as this comes in, keep them pulled out. Just walk in, place it, and then pull the technique off with the other foot. It'll automatically collapse. You have to, right? You have to. If I take a step, this knee has to go over. That's the angle, right? That's the Go ahead. This is a hybrid of stuff we've been doing. All right, with this aspect of this pop up in there with me. So, remember when we were doing the, the um, high approach, right? I was coming out, and then I was rolling his arm around him to, to get to this position, right? I was rolling and pulling his arm around me so I could get so I could make the circle he needed to go to, but he was always feeling stretch and pull. Right? Always. Well, I'm keeping it tight. Well, there was no way I could get to his leg in this one. But now I'm getting to his leg. Well, shit. If I need to get some space in between, so I'm almost like a big ooh. Make you feel like he's coming around. So instead of using my body, I'm actually using his arms. So now I can actually maintain some distance, and now I can actually get in to his knee. All right. So it will be very hard for me to do this from here. I have to reach back to turn around. I won't be able to get it. I need to have some distance to him to still come and look at his run. Oh, and then I can step in and go. This is a lot more complicated. All right. I just want you to think of it this way. Just like we've done all day, where they've had this feeling that they're being pulled out and around something, give them that feeling from here. Give them that feeling from here. And you'll see as they start coming around, that leg will present itself and then go straight from here. Alright? If you want, actually, let's do this. Just for a sec. Put it here. Do the rest of the technique like this. Like this. All right. He comes in and grabs. So again, we've done it here. We've done it here. We've done it here. Now I'm saying do it here. All right. So it's almost a modified, almost like a modified poke which is that. And give him that feeling, and then have them come around and do it like that. Do that a couple times. All right. Do that a couple times. Bell and Graves, you do what I'm trying to talk about. So here's what he's doing. I'm just, I'm just adjusting it midway. 
Alright? I'm so good at tech doing this whole thing the whole time. Right? And there's a point in time where I need to come back around to bring him around. But at that point in time comes around, instead of coming back, I'm going to shoot 40 for him. Thank you. Thank you. But we all know this feeling. Like, I've got him here. And I'm going to go back. Ooh, and take him that way, right? That, we've had that feeling. That left side is pulling him back the whole time. Go ahead and do that. Swoo, get here. And as that left side starts pulling back, I step forward my right. But the whole thing's going. And just as I feel that this foot needs to take back to finish it off, just as I get there, not before, just that. So he's always feeling like this the whole time. Okay? Not the floor, just that. This is the one we're going to work on. You guys have been working on this all day. I have faith in you. So this is difficult. This is, this is seriously difficult. But I mean, again, just. Uh, Okay. This is walk through. I mean, that's the purpose, is the ability to use this. Now, we're looking at this as a stop thing, but it doesn't mean that that um, can't be used any well. I'm not looking at doing crap, but at doing ha, wah, you know, kind of earthy. I'm thinking, like, well, let's just walk through like she's in. <laughs> oh, that works pretty well now, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And I get the aspect of me getting kicked in the groin out of the way, too. Which is nice. We grab. I'm just yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. Just simple, easy. Just literally, I just want you walking. All right. I don't want any. Okay. Um, mm, no. Take a step. Boom. Place your leg. No I mean, just close our distance a little bit. Take your next step. They fall. Okay. What was the distance? Oh. So I'm not. Uh, that's not how we move our hips in our body, is it? We don't stick a leg out and move our hips into it, right? We move our hips, boom, our leg follows. We walk. In. And because of that, too, uh, this feeling of getting your invaded is hurt and makes them um, recoil a little bit. We're going to end here. If I he was grabbing me, and I went like this, he has more of an opportunity to break my leg when I have his at this point in time. He can just drop. He just drop. And I'm going to get that in there. Ha ha! No way. Oh, no, Andy. Andy is now holding on to me. Yeah, can't do that. His grip just changed from holding me to holding on to me. If I do this, you grab, 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 grab. Andy's still holding me. I need to stop that. Ah! Change the tone. So literally, take that set, hit, boom, boom. Please just like, walk through. All right? Okay, couple minutes, and let's go. This is literally should be the easiest thing you've done. You're really all. seeing it. So the other aspect of that's actually, that's actually cool is the fact that this is very easy to do way too much. All right? The fact that I'm going into Adam like this automatically makes him move. And not even with the hands. It's just the fact that I'm pushing his hands into him is a problem. Right? What you were experiencing, Kyle, is since Jackie was so low, you didn't have that feeling. So you grabbed her and held her into you. And then and you pulled her into you. And the problem is all her weights are forward now. So unless you shove her back on this foot, that you won't be able to get it. You have to, you have to move. But feel that? She's moving backwards already. She's holding on to me. She's holding me in now. Her ass is behind her foot. All right. So you're doing. Everyone's just doing too much. The aspect of me just moving in and just. Is a problem. It's not for me. I need to stop this too. I can do this without me. 
Okay, it's that, that aspect. Now, obviously, someone's, if you're in a fight, someone's gonna let you do that, but the point of this is working as she said, we'd be moving him like this, and taking it down. You know, we'd be doing other shit, all right? But in this one we're looking at, again, it's still saying she said, and getting him off balance, is, whoa, okay. Moving, okay? So, just don't hold on to her. Don't be so fucking nice. All right, <laughs> stop that. Hey, so that kind of led off in a kind of cool direction. Again, I was hoping it would because she's fighting for Jizan um, is something we see every once in a while when we talk about old man fighting and stuff like that, but we never looked at it as like a practical fighting tool. All right. And again, that being said, what is it like? No, fight for Jizan. Well, there's going to be a lot of other stuff. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of emotion. Jizan is a very calm place to be. You don't, you don't fight with Shizen angrily. You know, oh, I'm mad at you. It's kind of a feasible purpose. You move too stiff. All right? Shizen is like against the kitten. Oh, you're so cute. You look great. This I mean, it's not like that. You don't care. You're very happy and light. Um, and that's, that comes through with Shizen. Shizen isn't angry. You know, whereas like Yumanji's. You know, so, you're, so the, like, the emotional section will help to determine that. You see, we're not so placid in it, like, but same structures are applied. Yeah. Like if I'm like she's in it, like, and I'm oh not oh, I don't like this. I'm just so made to this. Oh, I should do. Look, I feel better. But look, this is kind of the same. Just put my arms in different places, right? You want here, you want more here, and up here. But this is all. This part still the same. Why? You know, who wouldn't be? I wouldn't fight him if she does. Like, what are, you like, you know, what are you thinking? You know, but if I was like, whoa, man, this is what the hell? You know, I'm coming forward and you're fire and you manji, you know. But the foundation of learning to move your body in Shizen is very key. When I saw Kai approach in there, all the wrist locks are in there. You know, all the other, all the Gosaki Nagi's in there. They're all in there. Everything you do, everything in Shizen is necessary. You just won't be mentally in Shizen, if that makes sense. Or you can pull yourself mentally in Shizen if you wanted to. So it's just a joke. I guess it's not going to be so funny. That's the old man version. That's the food proper for that Shizen. And the cigar for you, you know, I mean, this, this, um, and You know, this, oh, getting somebody from here, getting them here, and not letting them have it back. Is very huge. Oh my god. If you get somebody to hear, I mean, unless you let them go like this, and you get defeated, then you got them. Any which way you want to go is going to be golden. It'll be amazing. You know, as long as you give them that feeling, ah, just so another good one too. You know, to kind of like, so it's not the, it wasn't the hardest class in the world in terms of physicality, but in terms of just like stuff you should really know, foundational structure. Off balancing and how to keep, get easily get and keep off balancing. Man, I mean, just. God, it's a great class. I'm say it to myself. Uh, questions, thoughts? All right, you guys, uh, I don't know if I'll see you Wednesday. I will be here Wednesday, but I don't know if I'll see you guys. If I don't, have a great Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, Hanukkah. Have a great time and uh, happy holidays and, you know, drive safe and nice job, guys. Bye. <laughs> Good job, Lana. <laughs> What's going on? Why didn't you?